Only man has the godlike power to make his surroundings change to fit him. Because his environment will change as he changes. A man's environment is a merciless mirror of him as a human being. And if he thinks his environment can stand a little improvement, all he has to do is improve and his environment will improve to reflect the changing man. There's this mysterious subconscious mind of yours and it runs below the awareness of your conscious awareness. So you're not usually even aware of what's going on in there, like what it believes or how it limits your life. The reason it is so powerful is because it stores all of your memories, all of your feelings and emotions, and most importantly, all the limiting beliefs you've acquired since you were born. You need to understand the subconscious mind of yours. Your subconscious mind rules your life. 96 to 97 percent of everything that you do is done as a result of your subconscious mind. And when your subconscious mind gets programmed, it goes ahead and responds to whatever it is your conscious mind has placed into it. The subconscious mind of yours is most impacted by your feelings. A change of feeling is a change of destiny. I think, um that we define reality with our senses and I think that is one of the biggest delusions so the fundamental question is can you believe in a future that you can't see or experience with your senses yet but you've thought about enough times in your mind that your brain is literally changed to look like the event has already occurred now the latest research in plasticity says that's absolutely possible and can you select a new possibility in the quantum field and begin to emotionally embrace that future every single day to such a degree that your body as the unconscious mind, the objective mind does not know the difference between the experience in your life that's creating the emotion and the emotion that you're fabricating by thought alone to the degree that you begin to signal new genes and new ways to change your body to look like the experience has already happened. Begin to act as would the person you most want to become. Now that is, if you were already in possession of the goal you're shooting for, how would you conduct yourself in all of your affairs? Well, do it now, and tomorrow, and the next day. Begin now to act the part of the person you most want to become, and you'll end by becoming that person. Subtly, in little ways, in the way you dress, in the way you talk, in the unfailing courtesy you show to every person with whom you come in contact, begin to act the part of the person who has already achieved that which you're shooting for. The German philosopher Goethe gave us the secret when he said, before you can do something, you must first be something. When you behave like the person you most want to become, the things that person would have will tend to come to you. It's simply cause and effect. Don't be in too big a hurry. It takes longer to build a skyscraper than a chicken coop. Build slowly, steadily, and well. Then when you make it, you'll keep it. You'll stay on top. Your self-concept is your operating system. Everything that you produce on the outside is determined, modified, affected in some way by your self-concept. You cannot change what is being produced on the outside without changing your operating system. You always perform on the outside based on how you think on the inside. Now there are laws, the law of belief says that your beliefs become your realities. But the things that you believe may not necessarily be true. However, if you believe them intensely enough, they will become true for you. The law of attraction says that you attract into your life people and circumstances in harmony with your own thoughts. And your own thoughts may be positive or negative. They may be uplifting or depressing, but whatever, you will attract people and circumstances just like them. The law of expectation says that your expectations tend to become your own self-fulfilling prophecies. In other words, what you expect to happen usually does. For instance, your expectations could be that you are destined to have an extraordinary life and be extremely successful. Is that no matter what happens, it's all part of a learning process that is leading you inevitably to great success, happiness, and accomplishment. And if you absolutely expect that to be true, if that's your fundamental belief, then over time that will become true. You'll be able to throw off the ups and downs of life. You'll be able to ignore the negative influences around you. 
If you confidently expect to be a great success, then by gum, you sure will be. No matter what people tell you, you just say, well, it'll be all right. Everything will work out fine. And we know that an attitude of confident expectation is a hallmark of highly successful people. They just expect to succeed more than they fail. They expect to keep making progress. They just confidently expect it. And surprise, surprise, your expectations affect your realities. How, what you experience on the outside is determined by how you think on the inside. As they say, you are not what you think you are, but what you think you are. Here's two excellent questions to jot down. And this is for mature people now, because these are kind of tough questions, especially one. Here's the first question. What's got you turned on? That's a good list to make. Here's what's got me turned on. Here's what's got me up early, staying up late, maximizing my abilities all day long. Here's the list of what's got me turned on. Now here's the next question. What's got you turned off? How come you don't have the zest and the vitality and the appetite for daily accomplishment? I started making a list of the things that had me turned off. And once I got that settled and then started making a list of what had me turned on and what would turn me on in the future, I'm done. my life has never been the same. It was like a revolution, a personal revolution, a 180 degree turn. I can't say it's strong enough. It's easy to get lazy in designing the day and designing the year and designing the future and designing what you want to accomplish and just cross your fingers and hope it'll all work out that the favorable winds will blow it all your way. I'm telling you, it's not gonna happen. So this is the part of the exercise. It's just, you know, buckling down, making this list. And you got to continue this long after we've, you know, turned out the lights and we've all gone home. Keep this up. And one of the best ways to keep it up, I've already covered yesterday is what? Teach it. Key is to teach it. Jan was right. You don't need recognition. Just go give everybody you can think of that deserves it recognition. And your own self-satisfaction is recognition. Now, if they never put a crown on your head, who cares? One of the great rules, by the way, one of the most important of all principles is to challenge your self-limiting beliefs. You see, we are all plagued by self-limiting beliefs. Beliefs that we tell ourselves, things that we tell ourselves to hold ourselves back. We hold ourselves back with self-limiting beliefs. We tell ourselves that we're limited in some way when in reality, not true at all. In fact, Ernest Holmes, the great metaphysician, once said that all negativity is rooted essentially in the frustration of potential. People feel that they're capable of doing vastly more. Nelson Mandela said, our great problem is not that we feel that we are powerless, but that deep down inside we feel that we are powerful beyond measure. Which brings us to all performance, all improvement in personal performance begins with an improvement in your self-concept in your beliefs about yourself. Good thinkers always prime the pump of ideas. They always look for things to get the thinking process started because what you put in always impacts what comes out. Read books, review trade magazines, listen to tapes and spend time with good thinkers. And when something intrigues you, whether it's someone else's idea or the seed of an idea that you've come up with yourself, keep it in front of you. Put it in writing and keep it somewhere in your favorite thinking place to stimulate your thinking. Spend time with the right people. As I worked on this section and bounced my ideas off of some key people so that my thoughts would be stretched, I realized something about myself. All of the people in my life whom I consider to be close friends or colleagues are thinkers. Now, I love all people. I try to be kind to everyone I meet, and I desire to add value to as many people as I can through conferences, books, audio lessons, etc. But the people I seek out and choose to spend time with all challenge me with their thinking and their actions. They are constantly trying to grow and learn. Every one of them is a good thinker. The writer of Proverbs observed that sharp people sharpen one another, just as iron sharpens iron. If you want to be a sharp thinker, be around sharp people. To become a good thinker, you must become intentional about the thinking process. Regularly put yourself in the right place to think, shape, stretch, and land your thoughts. Make it a priority. Remember, thinking is a discipline. No matter what you choose to do, go to your thinking place, take paper and pen, and make sure you capture your ideas in writing. Ideas have a short shelf life. You must act on them before the expiration date. World Walleye Flying Ace Eddie Rickenbacker said it all when he remarked, 
I can give you a six-word formula for success. Think things through. The follow-through. To start the thinking process, you cannot rely on your feelings. In Failing Forward, I wrote that you can act your way into feeling long before you can feel your way into action. If you wait until you feel like doing something, you will likely never accomplish it. The same is true for thinking. You cannot wait until you feel like thinking to do it. However, I've found that once you engage in the process of good thinking, you can use your emotions to feed the process and create mental momentum. Try it for yourself. After you go through the disciplined process of thinking and enjoy some success, allow yourself to savor the moment and try riding the mental energy of that success. If you're like me, it's likely to spur additional thoughts and productive ideas. One good thought does not make a good life. The people who have one good thought and try to ride it for an entire career often end up unhappy or destitute. They are the one hit wonders, the one book authors, the one message speakers, the one time inventors who spend their life struggling to protect or promote their single idea. Success comes to those who have an entire mountain of gold that they continually mine, not those who find one nugget and try to live on it for 50 years. To become someone who can mine a lot of gold, you need to keep repeating the process of good thinking. Becoming a good thinker isn't overly complicated. It's a discipline.